going on, y'all? It's your girl, Kate Simone, and I am back with another celebrity interview. Joining me right now, you may remember him from Prison Song as young Elijah. Alicia Keys was singing to him, telling you, or telling him, about a woman's worth. And had his cameo in Brown Sugar. But I think the best way to sum him up is Bow Wow's DJ. It's my guy, DJ Just. What's going on, baby? What's up, Kay? What's going What's, on? I'm good. Now, listen. It was like, it seems like when Bow Wow took his break, mm -hmm. you did too. Right. Because it's like, where you been? What's going on? Like, where's Just? I remember going to the screen tours and I'm yeah. like, yeah, I'm going to see Just. I'm going to see the whole crew. Yeah. And then it's like, Bow Wow took a step back from the music. And so did Jess. So you want to know what it was? Like with Bow stepping away from the music, mm -hmm. I had to reinvent myself. I had to figure it out. You know what I mean? We was on tours, traveling city after city, year after year, every year, mm -hmm. going out. So once he took a step back from it, you know, I kind of like, I was so caught up into what we was doing, I didn't really know how to make the adjustment right away. Got you. You know? So I had to just sit back, you know what I mean? Take my time. And then come back out. And come back out and yeah. get it together. Like, I get that. I totally get that. As I was giving a little rundown, though, about, you know, what you've done and what you've been doing. Yeah. Um, you was in the Music of the Heart yes. with Angela Bassett. And I gave the rundown, the cameo yeah, and Brown that was, Sugar. That was my first movie. Right. Music and of the Heart. What a lot of people don't know is that you really started your career way before you got on with Bow Wow. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people don't know that. A lot of people would say that, oh, just got his success from being with Bow. I've been, I've been on it before Bow. So here's my question, because when Bow took his break, you took your break, right? you know, and it's like, why didn't you just stick with acting when you were doing, you know, your career on the road with, you know, with Bow? So therefore you'll have something else that you could fall back on when Bow made that decision. My management, it just crumbled. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? It was like nobody there to really push me. None of that. You got to think about it. I'm a young kid walking in the buildings, signing contracts. It's already read for me. You feel what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I'm walking into, I'm just, yo, just pull up, get on stage. Not really understanding the business part of it. Exactly. You know what I mean? And my dad, my dad was, uh, he had stepped in to be my manager after my, after my former manager had died. So when my, when my dad had stepped in, he couldn't really make the transition, you know what I mean? To just be with me every day. You know, after a while, I had to just do it by myself. I get it. I mean, no, I get it. I get it. So let's, you know, let's talk about this. You know, going from a kid and you having everything right there for you. You having, you know, people give you stuff right there. Just because you're DJ Jess, the things that you've done, you're the, you're the cute little kid. You know yeah. what I mean? It's handed to you. And even for now, I think this is everybody's struggle. You know, coming in, especially people in their 20s. Let me say that. This is everybody's struggle. Having that moment in your life where everything is just given to you, and now you got to figure out what do I ask for? Right. What do I, um, you know, what do I ask for? What do I wait on? What do I work for myself? You know, how right. has that been for you? Because you are a child star. Right. Now an adult, and a lot of child stars who turn into adults don't make it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. just turn somewhere else because they can't handle the pressure. They can't handle that transition. So see, how is that for you? See, like the, the whole time, like you said, when Bow took his absence, I was still working. I just wasn't in people's faces. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I was still going to clubs. I was working like six, seven days out the week. You know, I was still moving around. I just wasn't on a, a bigger scale to where people know me from. Right. You know what I mean? So <clears throat> now it's like this. The more work you put in and the more consistent you stay and the relationship you build and you keep, that's what got me here. Indeed. Yeah, that's that's what keeps me running. I have very good relationships with people. I'm a people's person and now you can hang out with me, you know what I mean, open convo. That's what kept me going. You know what I mean? It was plenty of times where I thought about not doing it no more or, you know, just it was hard, you know, it was really hard to make the transition from being with Bao and being here and then basically coming back down and like, oh, Yes, now I gotta deal with this. Yeah, it's, right. it's, but I stay humble. I'm very humble. So, and that's why I'm here now. Indeed, because I was, I was definitely gonna ask you, like, does it, you know, does it get hard? Have you ever had that moment where it was like, you know what, I, I don't know. Um, I just, you know, I don't know where else to, what else to do. You know, I've been, I traveled around the world. Right. I've been 
I sold out arenas yes. three times, four times. Yes. You know what I'm saying? I've been yes. around the world and back. Yes. And been around the world again. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Does it ever get to a point for you where it's like, okay, what is there? What is there else to do? Because you know, you say like it's been t times you wanted to give up. You yes. know what I mean? Yeah. So even then, when you look at what you've done, you've accomplished more than a lot. You know, a lot mm -hmm. of things that you accomplished. Those are things people are just starting to do in their twenties. Or, or never or, done. Or never done, you know. Right. So do do whatever come across to you. Like, all right, look, I don't know what else to really do. So. Yeah, it has plenty of times, you know. But you just gotta keep fighting. You just gotta keep working. Like I never gave up. Right. You know what I'm saying I never gave up. So what was that motivation that made you keep pushing? My family. I became a father. You know, what I mean, I was a father at an early age. So, you know, I had to just, I had to make a living for myself and then try to, try to, you know, uh, adjust, make the adjustment between going to school, being a parent, going on the road. I mean, that, that was crazy enough for me. Right. Just that and all. But my kids is my motivation. Absolutely. Um, so Absolutely. that's why I do it. You know what I mean? So let me ask you this. So being a kid in a business, mm -hmm. transitioning into an adult, what are some things that you've learned that you can translate over into being a man a father, a DJ, an entrepreneur, what are the things that you can really say, this is helping me through the journey as being an adult? Okay, well, one thing is really believing in yourself. Um, you know, you like I said, it's t it was times where I didn't really want to do it or I didn't think that I would be able to get the opportunity because I, like, I fell, you know what I mean? I didn't right. think people would really be there to help out, you know? So one thing is just never giving up. I mean, and then again, just my people surround me, just having a good supporting cast, people that I could depend on. You know what I mean? That's another way too. Got you. So you mentioned this word reinvent. Yeah. You're reintroducing yourself, right. rebranding yourself. And with that being said, it's like you're coming back into a situation or coming into a situation where we're in an era where so many DJs, everybody want to be a DJ. Mm -hmm. And then you got some people that's undercutting DJs. You got some DJs that's actually working real hard. Yeah. What are some things that you, you know, don't like about this new DJ era? I could tell you some of mine, but I just want to hear from a, right, from every, a vet. All right, everybody's <laughs> a DJ. Right. Like, you don't, it's not really about the skill anymore. Okay. You know, as long as you have a good library or if you could put together a nice little set of songs, you could get booked. Agreed. You feel me? So that's, before it was just like, yo, you gotta be able to blend. You gotta be able to mix. You gotta know your pitches. You gotta be able to scratch. Now it's like, yo, this my boy, put him on. You know? Or, right. Yo, how much does DJ charge? Nah, just put him on for this amount of dollars in a hookah. He's good. Like, and then you have females DJing too. The DJ, <laughs> <laughs> listen, the female, listen, the female DJs, mm -hmm. I like it. I like I like female DJs, but 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 they taking jobs too. Okay. They taking a lot of jobs from males only because y'all clean up nice, you know, y'all just look better. But when you compare it to a skill, a lot of them don't have a lot of skills, but they still get the job, you know. Right. So what do you think it is? Like, what do you think it is now? Do you think it's more of social media? You know that the following. Do it's you definitely think that. It's, yeah, that that social media plays a big part in everything. Mm -hmm. If I had social media in my heyday, of oh course. god, it's, I wouldn't. It would have been over. No looking back. You feel what <laughs> exactly. I'm saying? All the stuff that I, there's no looking back. So that social media plays a big part in it, though. Got gotcha. you. Big, big, big part. So do, how do you still remain passionate about it? Listen to all the things that you don't like, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. about the new era where everybody's a rapper, everybody's a DJ, everybody's something. Like what? How do you remain passionate about it? Really, really, that's all I know. I've been DJing since I was two years old. So it was either DJing or nothing. Like I started playing basketball later on in my life. Right. But DJing is all I know. So, and I'm very good at it. So I just stuck with it. So how do you remain DJ just in a world full of DJs? What separates you from everybody else that's coming out right now? How do you stay fresh? How do you stay relevant how do you stay you right. you know what makes people want to continue to come back to you okay well one i take my job very seriously mm -hmm. you feel what i'm saying and um i'm very passionate about what i do you know what i mean and i'm always going to be me so i'm very i'm like i said i'm a very cool person y'all can just come and rock out but you know when i pull a laptop out and i gotta turn into dj just i'm gonna turn up right 
You feel what I'm saying? Level 10, right? Level 10. That's all day. <laughs> that's all day. Like, that's going to happen. Right. Regardless. You know, and then, again, it's just like when people see the stuff that I've done, my resume, it's like, yo, there's no way this kid did that if he wasn't who he was. You know what I mean? Agreed. It wasn't no way this kid could travel around the world, have his own radio show, do the war, do everything. Everything I'm doing is... Is, is because of the stuff that I've done and because of my relationships, because I'm, I'm a good, kind hearted person. Got you. You feel what I'm saying? So relationships took me a long way as well. When you pull up to the club and you got the DJ, do you still got your turntables with your vinyls? Or do you got the electric, you know? They have the... Go? I don't know what it's called. It's a, called a DJ controller. The clubs usually have the controllers in there or the equipment in there. Mm -hmm. What I prefer, though, is turntables and a mixer. That's what I grew up on. Two right. techniques and a mixer. The controller, it's, it's, it's the turntable, the mixer, everything is together. Right. So it's just, you just bring in one case versus bringing two, three, four, five cases. Cases, right. You feel In the club. But I use the controller when I'm on tour. Okay. Because of the, we on stage, I might bump. Right. You, and, you, Makes and, sense. Yeah, yeah. And nothing to happen. But if you try to do that with a turntable, the needle will jump. You know what I mean? You got to clean your needles. You got to make, it's just a lot. It's more, it's, it's more original with the technique. And right. now, with the controller, it's just like, yo, this is the technology. I don't even have to touch the thing. I can press the button here. I can make a beat. I can loop. You can't do that when you're really manual on the turntables. I prefer, the, I prefer the turntables. I prefer the techniques. I prefer the, the classic way. Exactly, because that's how it's supposed to be. Yeah. I think, I mean, I like turntables. I mean, yeah. the controller. The controller is straight, cool. but it's, it's very, it's very convenient. convenient. It's very convenient. How you're explaining it, absolutely, yeah, it's, it's definitely convenient. convenient. But when I go out and I actually see DJs, I like the mixing, the scratching. Like I enjoy yeah, that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I enjoy the That's art. That's the of art it. of it, exactly. You know what I'm saying? So That's the art. Right. That right there. Now let's talk about reinventing yourself, okay? Mm -hmm. We're in an era right now where it seems like I'm reliving my childhood. Every time I turn on the TV screen, they're relaunching a new a movie from my age. You mm -hmm. know, my era. Right. They're Lion King, for instance, you know. I don't know how I feel about it yet. I think it's going to be dope. You think so? Yeah. I think it's going to be dope. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't going to lie. I think it's going to be dope. I don't know. Like, I'm... Mm. I'm I'm on the fence about it. Okay. I want to see it first. Because I don't feel like... I, first of all, I didn't feel like they needed to redo it anyway. That's just me. I didn't, I didn't feel like they needed to redo that. Beauty and the Beast, none of it. Mm -hmm. That's just me. But I get it because they're reintroducing it to the our younger, younger generation. Our younger that's, generation. That's what I was but that's what I mean when I say, like, they're really flipping our era mm -hmm. and then making it relevant now. Right. Like, you look up, they're doing it with the movies. They're doing it with... Um, our brands, you know, mm -hmm. going from Baby Fat Now partnered up with Forever 21. Mm -hmm. You have Fila that made his comeback. Um, when I saw it, it was through DTLR and um, Sneaker Villa, and mm -hmm. then they teamed up. Okay. And now you got FUBU partnering up with Urban Outfitters. And the reason why I had to ask you that, because I know you was a FUBU kid for yeah. the ad campaigns and yeah. things of that nature. So how did you feel when they said, FUBU is back, we partner with Urban Outfitters, and I'm not going to fraud you. I literally was like, when I first saw the ad, I said, oh, I got to get me some FUBU. Yeah. You know, I got to go get yeah. me a hoodie real quick. Yeah. You know? So how, how did that feel when you, you know, saw that it was coming back and were you a part of that relaunch? Yeah, it was um, it was definitely dope. Um, being that all four, all four owners of the, of the brand from Queens. Right. So, oh, they're black too, and I didn't know that either. I didn't know that for the longest. <laughs> I was getting to that. <laughs> I didn't know that for the longest. I was getting to that. <laughs> I was getting to that. Black owned business. Right. You know what I mean, so you know you got to support your people. How the whole relaunch thing came about, actually, my dad told me mm -hmm. about it. My dad said, yo, listen, FUBU's doing this launching. They coming back out. I was like, hmm, what? Okay. One side of me was like, I don't know. <laughs> right? Right. The, second, the second side of me was like, yo, this could be dope. Like, I was already a part of the campaign. All they got to do is see my face. So here we go. My dad, he picks me up. We go to the launching. As soon as I walk in, they remember who you were. They're are. like, yo, where you been? Boom, boom, boom. And it was just like that. Next thing you know, a couple conversations. And now I'm back with the team. The thing about it is FUBU may have relaunched their brand, but they really expand 
their business. Yes. You know what I mean? It's not just clothing that they came back right. out with. Right. You know clothing, what I mean? We got we got the phone, we got the Fubu Mobile for the phones. We got the Fubu suits. We just signed we just signed with Caraco. You can go to Caraco right now, get your Fubu suit. So these tailor <laughs> suits, like talk to me. Tailor, yeah. Tailor suit. If you want to get married and you get married in it. You wanna go to Sweet Sixteen? Wait, you can get 16. some Fubu suits. You wanna go to prom, you go to prom. <laughs> like whatever you need. We got all ages. Yeah. <laughs> we got we got Fubu watches. Okay. We got a watch brand. We got the we got the, the shades line. Oh, uh, we got. I'm trying to picture this Fubu suit. Yo, I'm sorry. Listen, nah, it's 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 a it's a nice tailored right. suit. Two piece, three piece. No, you gotta oh, show yeah. me this. Somebody gotta pull out their phone and show me this. Like, oh yeah, we got it. We we gotta show me this. No, cause I'm like I'm thinking when I see Fubu, right? Even when I saw it for the Urban Outfitters, I was like Fubu. It looks good though. Don't get me wrong. Like I, it looks good. But I still go back to the '90s with the you know. Yeah. Big and you know bulky. Yeah. I still think of that. Yeah. So when you say suits, it's like suits. Nah, we got real And then y'all got suits. then y'all got the the Fubu Mobile. Fubu Mobile, just like how you got T-Mobile, how you got Sprint, how you got Boost. We got Fubu Mobile. We got our own phones. Our own our own everything. For us, by us, everything. That's so dope. Yeah. But for it to be a black owned company, you know what I'm saying? I'm like seriously, yeah. like y'all came back and was not playing. Yeah, we got to. They they came back and was not playing. So that thing that that's super dope and you know, that's in itself is just an honor to see black blackness at its best, you know. Mm -hmm. Black boy joy. Mm -hmm. And then we got the Fubu radio that I'm on, so Exactly. So are you it's spinning or you actually have a show? No, I have a show. Uh I'm a um I'm an air personality. Got gotcha. you. Yeah, I have a show. Um, every Thursday that I do, mm -hmm. so that joint is dope. Me and uh, another girl that's on it too, Chris Childs. She she's definitely dope. Shouts to Chris. Um, and then Saturdays, like the weekends, we do mix shows. Gotcha. So during the week, I'm more like you know just playing like smooth R and B, maybe a couple classic joints that we grew up on, like I Age Group. You right. know what I mean? And then on the weekends, I'm playing all the radio stuff, all the turned up <laughs> stuff in the club. You know what I mean? And of course, it's clean. So. I mean, it's, 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 it's a clean bass radio, no dirty music, everything clean. So here's what I think y'all should do. I think y'all should take FUBU Radio and put it in every store that y'all have from, I guess, the watch store, like a FUBU store that y'all have. I mm -hmm. think that would be super dope. So every time somebody walk in FUBU, they can hear it. They can yeah, hear it. That would be hard. I think that would be super dope. That would be real hard. So being a young, young man for the FUBU ad campaign, Yeah. now you're back with FUBU, but like I said, the ad campaigns didn't stop. Mm -hmm. So I saw that you recently had a billboard in Times Square for the Stay Mellow campaign. Yes. For Jordan Mellow's yes. M12s. Yes. Talk to me about how that came about. Oh, man. Yo, I'm going to tell you. It, it, it's a funny story, right? Mm-hmm. It's, it's very funny how this happened. I'm going I'm to tell you. I'm going to tell you everything. Well, play tell me play. everything. Tell you play by play. All right, listen. It was like a couple days before New Year's. Mm-hmm. Bow was living in L.A. at the time. I was supposed to go to LA and DJ his New Year's Eve party. I ended up getting another booking to go to Africa with Kerry Hilson. I had to fill in, because her DJ got sick, so I had to fill in for Kerry. They took me to Africa. When I got back, I always had a relationship with the people at Jordan. Like, I always go, you know what I mean, chill, go to the games, you know, play. I actually playing in the Jordan tournament. So, when I got back, they like, yo, we're releasing a new video game. It was like NBA 2K something. It was like, it was like the seven, what, 16 or 17. It was like, yo, we want you to come down. We want you to like um, meet Melo. Mm -hmm. They didn't tell us about a billboard. They never told us this. Say, yo, come down, come meet Melo. We got the sneaker. You're, you're a part of, you're one of the influencers. Come try your sneaker on, boom, boom. So I went, tried my sneaker on. Melo walks in. Me and Melo playing the game. Not knowing that what they was recording is actually a part of NBA 2K TV. So if you go to NBA 2K TV and you go through the episodes, I'm on it with Melo. Oh, that's dope. Right? So after we started playing the game and stuff, we like um, go for like a break. Mm -hmm. And then now they're just pulling everybody individually to take this picture. Yo, put on the Melo gear, put on the sneakers, take a picture. So I'm up there playing with the basketball, doing doing stuff. <laughs> then they send an email to my phone like two hours after the event is done. Like, yo, in two days, y'all going to be on 34th Street in Times Square. The picture y'all took for the campaign is going to be on a billboard. I was like, what? 
I was like, well, what a new year. Right. So, so I walked into the new year <laughs> with a big billboard, you know what I mean? On 34th Street in New York City. That was big for me. That has to be big. That was Times major. Times Square? That was major. That's a move. That was okay. major. That yeah. is a whole vibe right there. Yeah, shouts to Jordan, shouts to um, Game 7. Yeah, reinventing yourself, relaunching yourself. That's how you started off the new year, which mm. is amazing and super incredible. What's next for Just? Just more stuff. I got the water right now that I'm working on. I guess we'll talk about that. No, we about to talk about that. Like, the water, wait a minute. So everybody's dropping, like, everybody's dropping clothing lines, you know what I'm saying? They dropping, like, sneakers here and there. You came with the water. Talk to me about the Liquids Club. So I know you have three different waters that you that you um, promote. Yeah. yeah, I have three different waters. The, the water I got right now that I'm drinking is the sports water. Okay. Electrolyte. Show the camera. The sports what water oh, yeah. right here. You can look at mine right here. Electrolyte water. Yeah, electrolyte water. Okay. Right here. Be like water. Be everywhere. That's the slogan. That's yeah. how. So with the, the sports water, of course, is for athletes. or I mean, people work out, people that run, you know. Um, this is our electrolyte water. We have another water. We have the O2 water. Mm -hmm. And that's the uh, that's the oxygenated water. So you could just drink that. That's just for, you know what I mean, regular. Just regular, like, yeah, regular just spring like water. Some regular spring water for okay. you. Right. And then we have the pH 10 water. That's the alkaline. That's that's like that's the top tier right there. Well, like I said, everybody comes out with like brands. You know, they got they they shirt line or something like that. And you said, nah, forget that. I'm coming with the water. Yeah. Like we gotta hit y'all with something a little bit different. Yeah, we gotta do a different corporate corporate world stuff. So how did this deal come about for you? Well, one of my one of my good friends back at home, DJ Superstar J, mm -hmm. he um he actually introduced me to a guy. Um, his name is Fats. Um, and he's been working on the water, this water, for like six years, like six, seven years. And he's been telling me, like, yo, just listen, I got this water. I want you to meet these people. But the water ain't right yet. The water not right yet. So after like years of maybe like, yeah, maybe a couple years of like testing it out, then we finally like got we, what we had wanted. Mm -hmm. And then um, they're like, yo, listen, when this water come out, like this is your water. Like, you know, like, I'm not, like, just, like, yo, here, take some orders and promote it. Like, this is my baby. Like, do you get it? Yeah, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so, yeah, so, Jay, Jay, basically, he, he, he walked me in, you know, and he introduced me to Fats. Me and Fats had a nice meeting, you know, and I. I was just telling him all the ideas I had for the warden and what I'm going to bring to the table. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, we, we, we locked in the deal. Yeah. So where can people find these waters and buy these waters, you know? All right, I'm gonna you were supposed to bring, he was supposed to bring me one yeah, I, and forgot. I'm gonna I'm 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 send a case up here. You gonna send a case I'm up send here? I'm gonna send a case. Okay. I'm gonna send it up here. Cause I, I, I really wanted my you. water. Oh yeah, this is good water too. This well, is I rub it in my face while you drink it. Go ahead. Yeah, I gotta drink it. Go ahead. <laughs> Quench your thirst. Hi y'all. <laughs> mm -hmm. I was supposed to have a water today. I got you. You got me? Yeah, I got okay. you. I'm going to make sure you get your water. For you to have your own waters and be a part of a, a water line, or not even a water line, a water company. Yeah, a company, yeah. That's just, you know, amazing. Yeah. So, you got the water line, well, the water company, excuse yes. me. You know, you still you still rock well with Bow. Yeah. You're reinventing yourself. you relaunching yourself. Yeah. You got the billboard in Times Square. You had that in the beginning of the year. And now you're making this move to Atlanta official. Yes. What's next? Like, what what's what are you going to do here in Atlanta? Really, I'm. I, I really just want. I want to take over, for real. Like, mm -hmm. really, I want to take over. Um, I just want to bring my energy. You know, um, I feel like Atlanta has always been like a home to me, being that I was always back and forth since I was a kid. And it's like I see these clubs. I want to get in the clubs. I want to tap in with the radio. I want to get on the TV. The, Atlanta is like the main hub right now. It is for exactly. everything. So you got to go with the flow. You found I had to get out of there. I had to come to Atlanta and make it happen. You know what I would love to see, though? I would love to see you on Growing Up Hip Hop. Ooh. Atlanta. A lot of people say that. No, seriously, I would. Even though, like, I'm a big fan of Growing Up Hip Hop Atlanta. Even though last season really reminded me of, like, Love and Hip Hop. But we'll leave that, we'll leave that there. Yeah. I really enjoyed the show. You know, yeah. I really do, um, especially for Bao, like Bao's storyline, it always changes mm -hmm. each year. And I feel like if you guys, like, showing that y'all are still cool, even Cleo, you know, mm -hmm. Cleo Thomas, shout out to you. Cleo, <laughs> <laughs> boy. <laughs> so, like, if, if y'all had, like, a storyline where all of y'all came together, 
still showed that y'all had the brotherhood, still showed that y'all still have loyalty and love for each other. I think that'll be a dope storyline to introduce you and bring you in and really have that welcome to Atlanta. Yeah. Bow, what's going on? What's up, Bow? What's up, Bow? What's up? The what's good? Want, the people want to know, Big Bow. What's up? What we doing? So we're going to talk to Bow about that because we got to get you on Growing Up Hip Hop Atlanta. I would yeah, love to see it. Yeah. I think it'll be dope, too. I think it'll be dope being that I'm I'm a person that actually grew up in hip hop for real. All right, so Jess, if people want to look for you, figure out. I mean, you here in Atlanta now, so yeah. people want to connect with you. I'm get outside. You up I'm outside. <laughs> Where can they find you? You can follow me all social medias at I am DJ Just. I'm right there. I'm live. I'm posting. I'm active. I am DJ Just everywhere. I bet. So we about to go holla at Bow Wow real quick. We yeah. Get him on growing up hip hop. I'm about to go get my case of waters real quick. <laughs> And then I think I want to sit poolside. You trying to go to the pool? Go to the pool. All right, y'all. So this has been another <laughs> exclusive interview right here. Yeah. We're Radio 1 Original.